English time and tonight's topic is globalization. Okay, um, well, the topic is globalization, but it's trial exam night, so um, there won't be much theory um, to globalization. One thing that I would like you to um, tell or one thing that I would suggest is that you come up with a definition of what globalization is prior to your exams. So in the preparation time, I would find or try and find a standing definition of what it is. Um, there is, or globalization is a lot of different things. Globalization has to do with business. It has a lot to do with business. It mainly has to do with business, really. Um, it has a lot to do with trade. It has a lot to do um, with organizations that organize trade, that do trade. Um, you have a couple of pages in your books about all the organizations that are involved in globalization and international trade. In, I think that the chapter is called international trade, actually. Um, but, well, international trade is probably the biggest aspect of globalization. Um, there is also a very, or a more personal um, aspect to it. Um, globalization has a lot to do with culture, has a lot to do with languages, has a lot to do with the internet, has a lot to do with entertainment. So globalization is everywhere. As I said, um, find definitions and narrow them down so that you have a working definition that you can deal with in the exam. Also a definition that sounds decently convincing if you have to talk about it, because it's, well, globalization is a lot of things. Um, first trial exam, I'll quickly show you the thing. First of all, introduction as always, um, pros and cons of globalization. A topic with a lot of pros, topic with a lot of cons. Um, I want a definition of what it is. I want a brief of that moment when you can't say the word. Um, a brief outline of what the developments were that gave rise to globalization. More than anything else, it was the internet, of course, um, because suddenly the world knew that there's countries outside, um, or that there's human life outside of Europe and America, basically. So um, the internet was the main thing. But of course, there's also other things, different things, social media, but then that goes together with um, the internet. And there are some statistics. Well, there's one. Um, what the world thinks about globalization. It has become a more critical issue. I think if you had asked people 10 years ago, they would have answered that globalization is a good thing. Nowadays, globalization is a lot connected with um, bad things. Child labor, exploitation of workforce in so-called developing countries. It also has a lot to do with um, environmental pollution because globalization deals with international trade. And international trade means that a lot of ship, uh, a lot of goods get shipped back and forth. So globalization is nowadays also connected to a lot of bad things. Um, well, here's what some countries in the world think about globalization. There are some third world, third world countries in the statistics. Usually, those who benefit from globalization in such a way that they get money. Or that they get jobs. They, um, well, but there's not that much of a difference, actually. Anyway, then we have the obligatory talk and then the general question about, or the general follow-up discussion about globalization. And there's a text, a very good one, I think. Quite not the easiest English. It's the Forbes magazine that published it, but gives quite nice pros and cons. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. So as always, I hand over the word to someone else. As always, um, we do the introduction part in the beginning, but in the second exam, we don't do it again because 
Because well, it's redundant. That's a very nice <laughs> word. That's a very nice word, actually. Just I, uh, I have to open up my notes here. Yeah. Do so. Oh, I just closed my exam. I'm awfully sorry. I actually wanted to make it a bit bigger so that you can see it. Okay, so you are here tonight for your English exam. Yes. Would you tell us who you are, please, and why you're here, and what the plan behind the Matura is? Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Peter, and I used to be a uh, cook um, in one of the biggest um, hotels in Tyrol. I can't tell you the name, I'll <laughs> say your name. Um, and I was a really passionate cook, but it turned out to be a, a quite boring job and very mm. exhausting job. Um, yeah, and therefore, um, I can remember the day um, I had an idea what I wanted to do with my future. And then I decided I need to do the Matura at first, or the A-levels. And I actually, I'm not sure what I want to do, but I'm sure that I need the Matura for it. Well, yeah. that's... A good reason, in any case. I think you're the first person who tells me that being a cook is boring. Like the exhausting part, I hear quite frequently. The boring part, not that much. Is English your first exam? Or yes. English the first yes, one? Yes, yes. Well, a good start. A very interesting topic as well. Would you tell us something about globalization, please? Of course. Um, so, as always, um, I'm going to include in my presentation those three um, points uh, um, starting with the definition of globalization then a brief outline of what gave rise to globalization and then some of the most important pros and cons um, so globalization actually i think the most easiest way to explain what globalization globalization is is that um, you can get products um, from everywhere um, via a local shop but also of course via the internet so everything you want you can get and of course that has been made possible it's now the historical part uh, because of the development of trade so of course, trade is a very old um, thing to do. Um, people started trading when they had just. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> An overflow of food, for example, or other goods, they started trading. Um, the Silk Road developed from uh, China. Um, which was a, a huge uh, influence and was a major part of China's environment um, um, economy <laughs> not environment um, yeah and of course then f forward a um, few hundred years <laughs> uh, to the industrial rev uh, revolution where trade kind of developed again through the through means of through new means of transportation such as train and ships so stream steam driven ships and so on and of course nowadays there are planes there are Trains, still trains, but of course a lot of a lot of goods are either transported with planes or um, big um, container ships. Actually, um, also important, of course, is then globalization and, and the internet and in general. As I've said in the, in, the, in the introduction, you can get everything 24-7, you can order it and mostly 
you'll have it in the same week, depending on when you order it. Um, so most important con or cons are basically that it is very convenient. So speaking globalization made it possible that we can sit at home and just order from the internet. Um, goods that we can't find local maybe, but also if we can buy them locally, um, they're often um, more expensive mm -hmm. and people think, why should I even move and pay more for something? So um, that is at the same time a con from, oh, I'm sorry. It was a con, but it can also be a pro, of course, somehow it's depending on uh, on the person, I think. Mm, I think it is mm, more a con than a pro. But of course, um, it is very convenient, especially if you, for example, if you go on a website that sells music instruments, there are some out there that are really fast with shipping. And they have special policies, especially you want to want to if you want to give something. Uh, if you're not satisfied satisfied with the pro uh, product, you have a thirty money, uh, um, thirty day money back guarantee, and so okay. on, which you normally don't get with local stores because they really have to um, buy the products and rely on their customers that they buy them of oh, course makes sense. yeah which is it is kind of an ambiguous uh, thing i think to name the pros and cons since the pros can also be cons sometimes yeah but of course you can if you're uh on an um, okay I, <laughs> If you see it from an economical point of view, of course, this is um, the thing to do, basically. I just wanted to look up the statistics here, but I can't find them here. But you have the statistics here. Here's my great statistics. Um. Yeah, so in Vietnam, there are a lot of people that are pro pro globalization. Um, of course, and in India too, uh, those are major, um, major industries, I think, especially when it comes to clothing and stuff, especially Vietnam and India. Um, of course, China too, but if we have a look at the US, for example, there is more or less still um a lot of pro uh, globalization huh. but at least there are more people that are kind of against it huh. and in france it's almost equal uh, yeah france seems to be france very skeptic equal, yeah skeptic <laughs> uh yeah What's wrong with the friend? It, it is i think sweden mm, germany yeah of course you it's it's really easy kind of uh, to um, evaluate the countries that um, do a lot of export, uh. exporting goods and so uh. on. And of okay. course, they are yeah they're pro globalization. You okay. see Germany, uh. all the cars and stuff. Uh. That makes sense. Yeah. Is it not like one of the Biggest cons of globalization, or at least that's what people say, is that Western countries have gotten the chance to exploit the rest of the world, basically. Um, is that not a contradiction in terms that countries like Vietnam and India are so much in favor of the whole thing? They are the ones who get exploited, really, at the end of the day. Yes, yes, of course. But at the same time, um, we have to think about that in those countries, um, the people that are poor um, somehow 
Of course, they're the ones that produce the things, but I think um, the thing here is that people think in Vietnam, the bigger, bigger ones or the richer ones, let's call them not bigger ones, the richer ones, they're of course are pro and they don't think about the people that produce uh, the, this, uh, these goods, no. let's call them. And of course, European pro, um, European uh, companies can produce their goods very, very cheap. And in the end, of course, they um, can sell their products still for a uh, uh, good price. I don't know, if it's good, but uh, <laughs> yeah, somehow a cheaper price since they also want to um want the customers to pay for the uh trademark or yep. for the copyright yeah yep yep that was that does make sense um one last aspects any ideas on like we very much talked about the business aspect to the whole thing outsourcing and producing somewhere else and exploitation of labor and child labor and so on and so forth are big issues. Um, what about the cultural aspect? Is globalization good in terms of culture? Like, did it, did it make our lives better in terms of culture or do we not have to know anything about other places or? Mm, yeah, it made it uh, better actually, especially when we think about the traveling aspect. No. Uh, it's now easy, even if you think uh, in, uh, in terms of Europe, if we uh, uh, want to travel to London, for example, you can do so from Munich or Memmingen by plane for, I, I don't know, 40 years or something. Uh. And that's, of course, because of globalization, but also because um, there are a lot of uh, airlines out there that want to be cheaper than the others. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, well, yeah, but traveling is a good aspect, actually, didn't, in the first place, didn't really think about that. Well, we should then all take the 40 euros flight to London as <laughs> long as we still can yeah. before the Brexit has, or not, has arrived, has arrived, which it eventually will, yeah. I hope. Anyway, time's up. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Where did my statistics go? Oh, okay. Well, in an ideal world, I would have had a pen and I would have written down what he said and what I wanted to analyze. But then I ran out of paper today, which is quite sad actually, but that's the way it is. There, I don't have a notepad anymore. So I'll try and remember as much as I can. Um, the definition of globalization was good. His definition of globalization was quite short. Um, should you be one of those people who sort of like something to have some background knowledge to hold on to, then as I said, um, learn a definition. I wouldn't learn it by, I wouldn't like learn it by heart kind of thing, because then it sounds so artificial, so, so learned by heart. But um, his definition was as I said, very, very concise one. He mainly focused on trade and on the economic aspects. As I said, there's also a cultural aspect. There is, um, well, culture and, and because culture comp in, like, comprises many aspects as well. So I guess it is really about economics and culture mainly. Um, language is also an aspect, thanks to globalization, the whole world speaks English, or at least so people claim. Um, that's always also an aspect. The fact that English has turned into one of the most important, um, if not the most important language in business and also entertainment and stuff. Ever since the advent of Netflix, everyone has started to watch stuff in original version. Um, so that's everything that goes together with globalization. You may want to include that or not. If you're really good in, or if you know a lot about business and economics, if that's your Fachbereich or something like that, then you'd probably be fine talking about um, outsourcing and stuff like that. So, 
Yeah, we had the statistics, some pros and cons. Yeah, as I said, we mainly, or Chris mainly focused on trade and on the money aspects. You can add culture, you can add language, you don't have to. If you do, make sure that your, um, that your transitions, your Übergänge in between the points are clear. So if you switch from trade to the role of English because of globalization, then please let your audience know that you're now going to do so. Um, I've heard a lot of exams where the examiners were sort of lost because they didn't know which bullet point you were talking about. Or, no, not, not you in person, but people, people who did their exams, they didn't really know where the examinee was in the text or in the, in the plan. So let them know if you change the topic. Exam number two. We are focusing on international trade this time. Um, we want to know what international trade is and what it has to do with globalization. Might be a bit repetitive here. Um, and who the operating bodies are. You should know something about the WHO, the World Trade Organization. I want to say the World Trade Center. And the World Bank. Um, a brief historic outline. We had that already, so you can you can do that again. Focus on the slave trade, I don't know. Um, some facts and figures on international trade, which is not actually the statistic that I wanted. Anyway, um, yeah, and the rest of the procedure, you know, so. We're going to skip the introduction. He's still... Peter. Peter, thanks. I, I, I thought you were Tom. Okay, he's still Peter the cook who wants to do his A-level exams because, because, because having the A-levels is a good idea. Um, okay, so um, globalization is the broad umbrella topic, international trade, the smaller thing. Um, might be a quite straightforward question, really. What is international trade and who are the people who do it, basically? Yeah, basically international trade, of course, the term already gives away uh, the definition, I, I think. Uh, international trade is concerned with the trade of goods internationally. Um, so as an example, of course, uh, of, uh, for as an example, um, there is, for example, trade from China to Europe, from China to the US, from the US to Germany, from the US to, to uh, Austria, Saudi Arabia, everywhere you can imagine on the plan, planet. Uh, nowadays, you can buy something from Australia and you get it in five days or one week that's international trade yes. which is part of course of globalization yeah goes hand in hand with it actually definitely does who does international trade um yeah there are a lot of um actually um there are some organizations for example the v h Oh, the World Health Organization, but they kind of monitor the international trade. So what's going on there? And um, they're more or less on the side of um, providing people a bet better lives, basically. Um, there's also the World Trade Organization, which focuses... Um, on how the trade is done. So there, for example, there are um, export fees, import fees, that they are not too high, that the um, trade is done in a proper way between two countries. Sometimes there are um, high tariffs um, between, uh, a few co between countries such as with the US and Austria. 
So if you want to order something from the US that is, I think, above 70 euros or something, um, don't do it. <laughs> it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and of course, in the European European European, European Union, um, we don't have such tariffs. But of course, yeah, as you might have seen, if you followed politics, politicians as the US and other um, countries kind of um, make high tariffs on certain products such as oil <laughs> so that they can't export it anymore more or import it anymore and so on, which is called protectionism. <laughs> um, yeah, something about the history that you. Yeah, uh, the history basically um, goes hand in hand with um, the development of int of the industrial revolution. If we think back on it, it was a major impact on international trade. Of course, there was trade before, I've already mentioned before, then before the Silk Road and so on. But of course, the in re Industrial Revolution was a heavy impact on, or had a heavy impact on international trade, and especially on the, um, on the, can't find a word, <laughs> um, how fast we can get our products in the end. So we kind of start with the Industrial Revolution and then think about nowadays there is a um, increasing curve in speed. That, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, we're going to skip the facts and figures because the facts and figures are not the facts and figures that I wanted. Yes. I committed a copy and paste error, which is quite ah. sad, really. If you can't copy and paste, that's quite sad. Um, no. <laughs> really, like, um, international trade is good for us, obviously, because we have a lot of choice. And if we go to the supermarket, there is mm. many things there. Is it really necessary? Really necessary? I don't think so. So, um, I think there are a lot of movements nowadays, so small movements maybe, but in, in the city of Innsbruck, for example, I think among students or smaller groups or here groups, um, there are movements that, um, it is more important to buy local and of course we can get for example if we want to have a specific product you might not get it here but so you have to order it but basically um yeah it is quite difficult um everyone has to decide for themselves but of course it is better to buy locally and don't have a huge variety of products because the problem we're facing is that normally people can't decide what they want to buy if they want <laughs> to buy uh, this t-shirt with this print or that one or that one in the end they're all the same but they're just different colors maybe and this right. is different and these shoes and so on and the same goes with with food uh, of right. course uh, Oh, yeah. If we had, if we weren't um, able to buy um, pineapple um, the whole year, nobody would miss it. I think. Probably. Nevertheless, international trade has given us many many opportunities. We can order everything from everywhere. Yes. Regardless of America's high import taxes or <laughs> export taxes or whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Is it, or would you, if we take the statistics from the first exam and place it here, basically, is international trade a good thing or a bad thing? Like, does it have more pros or more cons for you? In uh, yeah. I think it has more pros, but Somehow, I think we don't realize uh, which um, things are things got better through international trade because Probably. mostly I'm thinking about all the products we want or you're offered, and in this case, it's a con international trade because I don't know I don't need everything. That's true. But of course, international trade also affects other aspects. It also affects maybe if you want to have a certain car or a, I don't know, if you want to uh, have a product that you ever, um, that you dreamed of <coughs> or something. And now you can realize yeah. it because it's now possible to get it mm. and you don't have to travel to a country and then take it with take you. Take it with, yeah. Yeah. So, good sides and bad sides, yeah. as, as with everything. Yes, yes. Um, you mentioned those movements that sort of go against international trade, probably not explicitly because they no, probably no, no. wouldn't say they... But would you join any of them? Or do, do you see the point in any of them? Yeah, I totally. Yeah, I think... Um, it is important, especially, and there are a lot of um, producers that, of course, grow food, but also produce different things like clothing, apparel, um, in Tyrol, in Austria. So it doesn't mean we have to um, be a protectionist country and don't... Uh, do don't have to import anything uh. but I think it's important to kind of also um, maintain the goods or um, kind of change people's um, attitude towards um, local products uh. and so on that was a very nice last word thank you very You're much welcome well, the last word thing sounded a bit more dramatic than it actually should have. Um, I can't remember really if the whole historic outline thing, if that's in your book, yes or no. It is definitely in one of the books that I work with. Might be a different one though. Um, Knowing a lot of, uh, knowing some um, background information does not do any harm. So if you know what the Industrial Revolution was and if you maybe know where the Silk Road was and what it did, that might not be a bad thing in this topic. You may not need it because you're not tested on historical or on knowledge about history, but still. Knowing stuff is always good. Um, sorry for the facts and the statistics. They, I don't know. That is a totally different statistic. I've never seen this one before. It's way to go. I've never actually looked at it. So, sorry for that. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what happened. Um, in my original statistics, there was um, information about products that get most frequently traded in on an international level and there was also a brief statistics or it was more like an infograph that basically showed the most important transit routes in Europe also featuring Austria of course because a lot of international um, like a lot of um, deliveries and so on go via Austria goods that are transported to Italy and so on and so forth so that's what the statistics were all about. It was definitely not this one. Ah, well. Intellectual property. Nice. 
That's a nice aspect, actually. Nowadays, with um, the advent of international trade, you can also trade intellectual property. That is quite nice. Wouldn't have been so uninteresting. Is that a word? Is uninteresting a word? Okay. Oh, uh, didn't sound it wrong. Anyway, um, yeah, so we did not have any statistics. Um, in international trade, as you are not, um, you're not economists, you're not business people, so you don't have to know all the, um, all the background information that there is to the World Health Organization, to the World Trade Organization and to the World Bank. Some basic facts, maybe the World Bank are the ones who should theoretically maintain some kind of a balance um, in terms of distribution of money. So they should make sure that developing countries get some money as well. They were also the, world, um, the ones who negotiated some of the treaties uh, with Greece when they needed financial assistance and so on and so forth. So their um, task is to <clears throat> make sure that everyone gets a fair share of money and assistance in the world. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Sorry for the statistics. They would have been quite interesting. If I find them, I'll show them to you next time. Um, if there are no questions, no, there aren't actually. Uh, or just YouTube or something. Okay. No, no questions. No questions. So. I know everything. Well, it is a topic to know everything about, of yes. course. They are very well prepared already for their exams that they will have soon. Anyway, um, if there is no questions, we will see each other again next week. Same time, same place. Thank you very much and good night.